So I've been thinking lately, why don't we see more large subwoofers, like 21, 24 inch subwoofers in sealed cabinets? I mean, I see them all the time being built nowadays because they're becoming a lot more common, but they're almost always going to a ported and they're porting to like 13 Hertz and it makes the box just really, really big and the port really, really long. And in a lot of cases, uh, you actually have issues with uh, resonance, port resonance that might end up becoming problematic in the final sound quality of the subwoofer. And I'm wondering why we don't see more sealed. So I wanted to take a 21 inch subwoofer, put it in a sealed box and kind of see what the response might look like in a room. So let's crawl over to WinISD. I guess we just open it up and we'll kind of see what it looks like. All right, so what I have here is an SB Audience Rosso SW800. This is a 21 inch uh, subwoofer and I wanted to put it in a, a small box. So I built just a six cubic foot box. You can go bigger and I'll talk about that in a second, but um, a six cubic foot box seemed to be the best size for this. Now, to give you an idea of what that basically is, that's a two foot by two foot by two foot box. It's a really small box for a lot of people to put a 21 inch subwoofer in. Now, obviously we can tell that this response isn't completely linear. If, if we went like more like 20 cubic foot feet, we could get it a lot more linear and we could get larger extension. The extension actually goes down to 37 Hertz and a six cubic foot box, uh, we're closer to 45, 44 Hertz, 45 Hertz as, as an F3, which is the three decibel point of the subwoofer itself. That's a far cry from like 13 hertz that other people are sometimes porting these to. So why would a sealed make any sense at all if that's the case? Let me show you why. Uh, this driver is actually 98 decibels sensitive. Now, if we take a look at, say, the maximum power, the maximum power of this driver in a six cubic foot box is almost 800 watts all the way across. There's a small blip in it, which is like 600, 790 watts, but really, really the 800 watts should be pretty good. If we increase that to the 20 cubic feet, we start to see our uh, maximum power go down considerably. Now that's a big deal uh, with this because one of 20 foot cubic foot boxes is much bigger than a six cubic foot box, uh, but two, the other reason is uh, we, we would have to be concerned with power. And with this being 98 decibels sensitive, we have what we call a lot of overhead with this. So what we can do is we can actually use our room gain as an advantage. Now, if you're not familiar with room gain, what it actually is is it's using the length of the room to actually gain low end frequency. And everyone's room does this. And the smaller your room is, the the sooner your room gain starts. Now, Aaron's Audio Corner did a great video on this. I'll link that in the description. But the basic premise behind this is if we take the longest length of our room, we can kind of estimate where our room gain is going to start. So the longest length of my room, let's just say it's 20 feet. So what we'll do is we'll do 20 feet. We'll multiply that by two. That'll be 40 feet. And then we're going to divide that uh, by feet per second. Now, the feet per second is 1,125. So we'll take our calculator out. We'll do 1,125 divided by 40. And when we do that, that's going to give us the frequency at which our subwoofer should start gaining room gain, or where our room should start gaining, at least. So at 28 hertz. So if we go to our filters, we can create a Linkwitz transform, and we can add a 28 hertz uh, that... The FO would be 28 hertz. That's where we're expecting it to start to take over. Our Q is going to be 0 0.707 on both of them. And we're expecting that gain to go all the way down to 1 hertz. We'll hit close. And now we'll activate that. And we'll go back to our transfer function magnitude. And now that's looking a little bit better. Not great. We're still down 13 decibels at 10 hertz. But it's looking a lot more feasible now. We're gaining some more of that low end back. Thankfully, DSP is really cheap nowadays. So what my thought process is, okay, why don't we take this same subwoofer and do some DSP to it? Now, a lot of people would want to DSP this up uh, with a 98 decibel 
sensitive speaker, you don't necessarily need to do that. So like if we take a look, at, and honestly, it, it could add to source. There's a lot of reasons why you don't want to do that. But if we take a look right now at the SPL, this is just one 21 inch subwoofer. Our SPL can be 113 decibels, which is really good at its lowest point. <laughs> so that's really good. So basically all we need to do is start EQing this down. Now I already figured out some EQs. I basically uh, added a 50 Hertz EQ and then I added a uh, 70 Hertz EQ and a 33 Hertz EQ. And then I added a crossover point. And by doing that, we get a very, very linear response at 113 decibels. So realistically, this subwoofer should have more than enough headroom. And then we could put this in a much smaller box to fit inside your room. And honestly, it's, it's not even that expensive. Uh, the amplification is probably going to be the, the most expensive part of a build like this. So that should work really good. And you could even get better than your ported and any much smaller box. Your ported is going to be probably at least a 13 cubic foot box, maybe even bigger, 15 cubic foot box. This is a six, so two foot by two foot by two foot. I mean, that's small. And the frequency response is pretty linear. But the truth of the matter is, everything I'm talking about right now is theory. Theoretically, this should work really, really well. Will it? That's what we don't really know. And that's what I want to test. So I actually got two of these Rosso 21 inch subwoofers in and I'm building two six cubic foot boxes, one for each one of them. And I'm going to test it inside my room and see if we can get results like this. And if we can, then I think the question of whether or not this is a viable option for a lot of people is going to be answered. Now, I think already, if you're using it for music, I think the answer is plain that you could definitely do that. I mean, F3 of 45 Hertz with room gain, you should be fine, you know, in the 30 Hertz, even if you want to do just a little bit of DSP. But really that subwoofer base for a home theater is what I'm curious about. Can we do it sealed with a little bit of DSP, still have that headroom and be fine? I don't know, but it's looking good on paper. So what do I have to do now? I gotta go build those subwoofers. Now, if you wanna see that build, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell so you get instant notification when that video goes live. All right, guys, this is Toys DIY Audio, and I'm out.